Hey, what's up guys? This is Freddy Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this time I want to talk about the mesh tools. And you can see the mesh tools. This is one of the products of Insidium Fused. Okay, so they call this one Fused now. And included inside of it is the X particles particle system, Terraform X for uh, landscapes, all right? The mesh tools, Cycles 4D and all of this good stuff, okay? So today we want to talk about the mesh tools and already I have to tell you, Insidium already released quite a good training on this one. And sadly, they also used a donut, so they were just faster than I was. But anyway, I still think this will be a beneficial training here because I will vary the technique and give it just a little of a different approach. And honestly, I already did the liquid donut using X particles tutorial, so I just couldn't resist to make a crystal donut. All right. So I think you will still definitely benefit from this training, even if you already watched Insidium's tutorial on this topic. But obviously, you can see I gave it a really different approach. Okay, so that looks quite different. And I also combined it with a fields growth technique. So you can see we start with something like this, but then the crystals are growing and take over the donut until we arrive at something like like this all right this tutorial will also include how i light the scene i mean this is really basic stuff but maybe you still want to know how i lit in my scene and what materials are used okay so i can also share this with you but other than that i think we can just hop into cinema 4d and start with the tutorial okay all right and just a really quick advertisement for my patreon 3d bonfire okay this is the place where you will find a lot of more quality training on x particles octane and cinema 4d okay so if you still don't have enough man you should check this place out all right so finally in cinema 4d you can see this is my scene file and this is my octane live viewer it looks beautiful but i think we just want to start really from a new project let's just kill this one and start from scratch and you can see i already docked the mesh tools here in my viewport okay you can also do that but other than that let's just start with a torus and of course i wanted to say let's start with a donut okay so that sounds already way more fun and friendly and hold down nb to show the lines and now the first task would be to give this one a really interesting pattern of polygons therefore i hold down alt and go to the empty dual graph i think it's a strange name and also a strange symbol all that it is doing is to give this one triangles but you can also go to this triangles all right now you get this beautiful distribution pattern already so i honestly already think this is really interesting but just want to reduce this one so i think we don't need to have so much polygons in our donut the next step would be to put this one into an empty subdivider all right and you can see now this is quite densely subdivided but we want to vary this all right so just go to the shader put a noise inside of it all right so that already looks quite interesting i think we can again hold down alt and put it again into a subdivider okay now you can see these areas they are even more subdivided but it is going into the same areas like the previous divider okay so so i think this one just needs to have another noise again all right and i think i just want to go inside of it and give it another seat all right something like that and now you can see this is getting complexer and complexer all right so i think this is already a nice distribution of polygons so you know what i would just duplicate this one turn this one into red and this one i will convert it to a poly object okay so i'm sorry this is destructive by now but for the technique that i will use we just need to have points that we can access all right so you can see i already switched to the points mode hold down strg a control a or if you are on a mac now you select all of these points and now you can go to select set a vertex weight okay and now all of these ones they have a vertex weight of zero that's not so helpful but we need to just go a step further so so just go into your vertex map tag and say use fields all right now go to the freeze object here and go to mode and say we want to grow this thing all right it's a bit confusing but if you do this multiple times then you really know your way around okay now what you can do is for example grab a sphere a spherical field to be more precise and i just make this one smaller but you can see when i now give this a playback then this system is growing and we can use this vertex map to say crystals are growing in the yellow area for example but i think the way we set it up here is quite boring so i just want to get rid of the spherical field 
and I want to use a shader field, okay? So put a shader field inside of it, nothing is happening because the shader needs a noise, for example. All right, now we have a noise, okay? And this is also pretty weak, right? So we need to adjust our noise a bit. So first I want to scale it up, all right, and give it more contrast, maybe even a maximum. Or you know what, I go to something like 91, okay? And we could start with something like this. Okay, so this is going way too fast. The problem here is that in our freeze, you can make this one slower when you go lower with this value. So when I put this one to 50, now it's already slower, but still too fast for me. So I think I will put this one to 20. Okay, and you also can adjust it with the search radius here. So when I put this one down, it will also get slower. And I think I really like this one. All right, so it's not bad. For now, I just want to go back to the guru mode without the lines just to see it better. So this is our growth pattern. And you know what? On frame zero, I just want to start with something that is really like nothing here. So guess. So I guess I just want to go to frame 20, for example, set the brightness to minus 20, give it a keyframe, go back to zero. And now just put this one back to I guess minus 50. And now we really start from zero and then stuff is growing. Or to be more precise, crystals here, okay? That's what it's all about. So we want to have a beautiful growth system for our crystals. I still think this is too boring here, the shape here and there. So I still want to spice this up. And I think a good option would be to put a random field inside of it. Now put this one to overlay, all right? And I will also scale this one up maybe to 300 and hopefully we already see a change here. All right, so now the growth pattern will be more random, okay? I hope you can see it. If not, you can just put another random field inside of it, put it also to overlay and also to 300 or 250, whatever you prefer. So now this one should be quite random. And yes, I really like this one. And I also like it that it is not growing over the whole donut, but only in certain areas. And then it comes to a rest and we have our final image of crystals. All right. So I really like this one. Just in case if you want to have the whole donut filled with crystals, I guess you should just go higher with the radius, with the search radius. All right. And no, still not. Okay, so you have to put this value also up. So just play with it. But I think I want to go back to something like this. Okay, so it will come to a halt where we just have crystals here and there, but not on the whole donut. All right, so we want to use this vertex map later as a field again. So it gets a bit crazy, but that's what we are going to do. So for now, just click on your donut, hold down alt and put it into an empty inset. Okay. It's time again to show our subdivisions, all right? And you can see here with the amount, you can give it an inset, okay? So I would just go for something like this. Okay, that's nice. Also some variation and I think an offset of maybe three. Okay, no, that's not enough. Just put it to six, for example. I think that's better and a lot of variation because I think this will just make it even more interesting. Okay, now when I go back to my Goro shading mode, you can see, wow, we have a lot of detail on our donut. But to be honest, these edges, they are quite boring. Okay, so if you want to make this even more interesting, just hold down Alt and put it into a new empty inset. Again, hold down NB, all right, to see the lines. And you can see here with the amount, I think I just want to put this one to one. Okay, no, that's not enough. I will put it to five. Okay, something like this and an offset maybe of 0.2. Okay, somewhere around here. Maybe I can even make this into one clean bevel. So let me just see. No, I need to go down with it. All right, now this is almost like a edge here. So I will put it to 0.08. It almost looks like this is the magic number, all right? And basically what I did, I used this empty inset as an additional bevel on our objects. And you can see now we get all of these beautiful highlights on the edges and it looks that much more amazing than before. All right, now just for performance sake, I will deactivate the second empty inset and you can see when I go back to frame zero, we already have the whole donut as a crystal donut. Okay, so this is definitely not what we want. We want to go to our first empty inset. Now go to the fall off. And man, this is so easy. You can just put the vertex tag inside of it. All right, and now let the magic begin. 
day, so it's a bit slower. But man, you can see now we have this beautiful pattern here, this growth pattern of crystals on our donut. And I think that's just amazing. All right, so this is pretty cool, but I'm still not satisfied. Okay, so I think we need to have a second system of crystals more aggressive ones and they should be like in the middle of these more flat areas all right and i will show you how i can do that so first i will just deactivate our empty inset again okay so this is our donut with our first growth pattern i would just set it back to zero and now you can just duplicate it i will just temporarily make this one invisible and now this duplicated pattern we want to use as a growth pattern for more aggressive crystals okay and my thought process behind it is that this one is just a duplicated version of the other ones that we use for the more flat crystals and the more sharp crystals they should grow with a time offset from the inner areas here, okay? And an easy way to achieve this would be just to go to your freeze, all right? And adjust these values. So I will just put this one lower and put this one maybe to 14, okay? So effectively, now this pattern will just grow slower, all right? So basically now we have high crystals here, but the more flat crystals, they are already a bit more here and there, okay? I guess you know what I mean, okay? I don't have to try to explain it better with my poor English. So basically, we made this pattern slower and now we want to use this one for more aggressive crystals. Okay, perfect. Let's just activate this one again. Okay, and we want to change the look of these crystals, all right? So I think these ones, they should be way higher and I think they also should be really sharp, okay? So just put the amount maybe to 90 or even to 100. Yeah, maybe we can also put it to 100, okay? So now we have these really sharp crystals, but now the problem is when we activate this one again, okay? Now they basically lay really on top of each other, all right? So I think the next task would be to just shrink this donut inside of the volume of the other one and then we can let it penetrate through the first donut, okay? Maybe it's better to do it and not just to talk about it. So I will create two materials. Let's just make one of that red, okay? So this will be our second donut and you can see it's basically laying on top of the other one. It's especially obvious when I go back to the start and these ones, they lay exactly in the same location. So a good idea would be to just select the second one and just scale it down, okay? So I just scale it down a bit, F3 for the right view. Now you can see we are inside of the volume of the other donut, okay, that's nice. I also want to shrink it a bit in the height. Okay, so we have a safety area here and there. That's nice. F1 to go back to your perspective view. But we have a problem here that the inner parts of the donut will still be outside of the first donut. Okay, so an easy fix here would be to hold down MI for the magnet tool. All right, I really like this one. Go to your attributes. I just make the radius bigger, something like that. And now I will just massage it inside of the other one. All right, and to have a better feedback, it's a good idea to just deactivate the empty insert. All right, and now I can just massage it into the other donut. All right, something like that. So now the second one is hidden inside of the first one. No, it's not completely hidden. So let's also put this one back, okay, until you can't see it anymore. Let's just see, okay over there, here, there, and one more time. And I think now we are good to go, okay? And I just put the red material on it just to see it better. Now you can honestly get rid of the materials again. All right, and what we have now looks like this, okay? So let's just give it a playback. So this is getting a bit slower because we have a lot of geometry, but you can see now on these broad areas of flat crystals, from the first system they are growing and with a time offset afterwards the sharp spikes from the second system will just penetrate through the donut and this will just look amazing okay so this looks just more complex with these two systems and man you get such a beautiful look here okay just be sure when you really are satisfied with it you want to render it then you activate this one again to get these extra bezels here and there for the second system, I think it's a good idea to also activate this one. And now also these aggressive spikes will have extra detail, okay? That looks amazing. 
All right, and now basically this is already the whole setup with the mesh tools. So you can see that's exactly what I did here. So we have the flat system that looks like this. And then we have these sharp spikes that penetrate through and this system gets just even more complex than it was before. Okay, so I really, really digging this look here. And I think now would be the time to just talk about materials, lighting and the selections for different materials. So you can see here we have a different material on top and on the side this is another material. And I think let's just make this one beautiful. All right, and therefore I will just go back to my final file, Crystal Donut. You can see I fired up the live viewer from Octane. I have a couple of materials here. They are pretty basic, okay, but things doesn't have to be complicated to look good, right? All right, and before I go through the setup, I think I can for now just undock this palette here and get rid of it. All right, let's just go through the scene. This one, these are just additional spheres, all right? They make the scene just more interesting. So you can see this is with the spheres and this is without it, all right? So for now, I will activate them again because they look beautiful. Next, you can see I have a null with different lights in it and now navigation will be a problem here when I open up the null for my camera. Therefore, I would just go to options, uncheck the camera update for the live viewer. Now I can get out of camera. And as I said, this will be pretty slow, okay? So navigation right now is a problem when you have all of these empty insets working here. So I guess for now, it would be a good idea to just deactivate these ones, all right? And I guess now we can move really smoothly in our scene again okay 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 now this looks really ugly so we can activate one of these elements again okay so we got some crystals here obviously this is not our final look because when you activate the extra bevel again then this will look already so much more polished and beautiful okay with all of these shiny edges here and there okay and of course when you activate this one again this is my spikes my spike crystal inside of it and you can see now we have a completely different look that's because the second system has this blue metal on it okay so let's just talk about it but it's really simple stuff here so this is just a blue metallic therefore you just create a metallic shader okay and I think I just went into the specular and tinted it blue and gave it some roughness all right so really simple material for the second system here okay I will just deactivate it again and you can see on the other system I have three materials okay they have different selections here okay so for example the metal is only on the outer selections this one is on the excluded selections okay and this one again it's a metal shader is basically everywhere where these ones aren't <laughs> okay so therefore i think a better way to show it would be to just go to my first frame right now you can see when i just go through the scene here and when this stuff is growing here okay then the material is changing around these elements then basically we get this material again but other than that, we would have this see-through material <laughs> and on the sides of these bevels, on these edges of the crystals, that's a better word, we will have the blue metal here, okay? And how can you achieve this? It's pretty simple when you go to your empty inset, then go to selections and just activate all of them, okay? Then you will get free selections and then you can just play with it and put different materials on it. And I think this is a nice combination. So we have some see-through material at first, but then metal is spreading and on the side of our crystals, we will have this blue metal, okay? So pretty simple stuff, but you just have to combine it with a good taste. All right, and you can see these crystals, they are spreading over my donut and the metal shader and stuff is taking over. I think this is just so beautiful. And I think now would be a good idea to maybe talk about the light setup, okay? So this is also pretty simple. I have like six lights here. Let's just deactivate them for now. And you can see the default HDRI already looks quite beautiful. So this is just this HDRI. And just remember in Octane, it's like this only the HDI on top will be illuminating your scene, okay? So that's how you could easily switch these ones out. For example, I have another HDI here. If I would like this one to light my scene, I would just drag it on top, okay? And 
when I go into my Octane Sky, you can see this is an HDRI. And this one is called Artist Workshop 8K. And this one is for free on Polyhaven. Okay. So it's a pretty amazing site for free HDRIs and other stuff. So feel free to check them out. Now let's go to my light setup. And therefore I would just rotate my scene a bit. Okay. So you can see all of these rectangles. For example, this one. Okay. So this is already like a huge plane beneath our object. Okay, so let's just zoom out. This is really huge. I mean, I don't know what I did here. Maybe it's an error, but let's just see what this one is doing. Okay, so this is giving a massive light from the bottom here. And again, let's zoom out of the scene. You can see this one is really gigantic here. Okay, but for some reason, I thought this one should be really massive. Honestly, when you go inside of it, take out a zero here and there, shrink it down to 10%. It will still look overall the same, okay? You could compensate for it by increasing the power again. Now this would be really bright, but I will just tone it back for now. Maybe put it to eight or something like that, okay? And basically we will get a really beautiful orange tint from behind, okay? Let's just check the other light here. This one is giving us a subtle red tint here. So. You already can see what I'm doing here. It's basically like painting with light and I use colored lights to just give me a great amount of different colors here and there, okay? So you can see this is just giving me this beautiful red color there. Let's go over to the next light. This one is coming from here, I guess, from beneath the donut, but then it is hitting this area, okay? And wow, this is such a beautiful light, okay? So just feel free to move your light around your scene and um, just search for a good combination of these lights. And maybe one additional note here, what I used were Octane targeted area lights. They all have this target expression with the light target in the middle of the donut. That's super helpful to just move your light around your donut and it will always target on your crystal donut. Okay, let's go over to the next light. And you can see now this is hitting it with yellow light from here. And basically this is such a fun process. And I would just encourage you to just play with your lights. Okay, so just search for a good combination here. Sometimes you don't need an HDRI at all. Okay, so we could also deactivate this one. Now this will get darker, but sometimes I just use an HDRI to overall give me some light already and then be more specific with area lights. Of course, you could also go into your HDRI, okay, and just decrease the power even more. So this is now at 0.2 and it's giving me just some ambient light in the scene, okay. So this is just a fun process and please just play with it. All right. And honestly, I can't say so much more about this technique. I mean, you just play with the, with the shapes, the light, these objects with the additional spheres. And at some point after 10 or 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour, you will already have something that is quite beautiful. Okay. So I really like that stuff. Of course, you don't have to go so crazy with the colors like I did. That's just my thing right now. But um, just in your case, you can be more tasteful, of course. All right. And as a last word, I just want to say thank you for listening to my tutorial. I hope you learned something new and please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, write a comment or even become one of my patrons. Okay. That would be just amazing. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. See you next time. Bye, guys.